The very same actions that can save your health and that of your loved ones will also mitigate the monumental environmental and food access problems that plague the world. It's the ultimate win-win. Improve your health and you'll be doing your part to heal the world with absolutely no added effort. That is one of my favorite parts of this book right here, The Starch Solution by John McDougall. And this is the book that I will be covering today. I'll be sharing with you some of other amazing quotes and tips, all different things that I've learned through reading this book. My name is Whitney, and if this is your first time watching one of my videos or this series, welcome to the Healthy Balanced Vegan Body series, where I report on a new video, a new book that I read every Wednesday in these videos and send you PDF notes to go along with it. The aim of this series is to really find and cover all of these different diets, all these different perspectives based on the plant-based diet. So while there's the vegan lifestyle, the plant-based diet, there's so many different opinions on what is best for us, what's gonna help us achieve optimal health, what's gonna help us get to that weight, that body shape that we really want to achieve. So my goal is to help figure it all out, put it all out on the table, find what works best for me, and share all of my research so that you can find what's best for you. And as I mentioned, this is the book that I have been reading, The Start Solution by John A. McDougall, who is very respected in this field. Also, he's joined by his wife, Mary McDougall. And John is somebody who has made quite an impact in the vegan world, in the plant-based world, because of all of his great research and thoughts. You can find so many talks of his on YouTube, which I can link to down below for you. He's written a ton of books. I think, what is this, like his 10th or 11th book or something like that. I'll link to this one and his other books in the description field if you want to check it out. And I love this book. When did it come out? Let's see. I got this, I feel like it was in 2012, 2011. Um, and I saw him, yep, 2012. I saw John speak at a vegan event that I went to in San Francisco, and I was absolutely blown away by what he was sharing about the starch solution. And this book has been sitting on my shelf for years, so I'm really, really glad that I took the time to read it. There's about 100 recipes in here, but also 200 pages of really detailed information about how starches can benefit your life. In fact, how starches should be the main component of your diet in John McDougall's perspective and I was just blown away by all of his findings and and just so many details in here he has all these great sections let's see here let me bring you to the uh, different contents here so he's got a whole section about starch of course how it's been a traditional diet of people about how starches make people healthy and beautiful the reasons to avoid animal foods, how starches can help you heal, USDA and politics of starch, which is really interesting, and the environmental consequences of eating uh, animal products and how starches can really help you out, as I mentioned at the very beginning of this. Then he has this great FAQ in here about things like protein, calcium, fish, fat, supplements, salt and sugar, and then he goes into some really easy strategies for you to adapt the starch-based diet into your life, including a seven-day plan, um, and like I mentioned, about 100 recipes in here and lots of great tips. So what I wanna share with you today are all of my um, favorite highlights from the book and share with you some of my own thoughts and experience here. And as I mentioned at the beginning, I do have a PDF that you can download. If you sign up for the newsletter list down below this video, you can get access to that PDF completely for free. I'll send it to you. I usually send them on Wednesdays right before I do the next video. So you'll get this one next Wednesday. All right, let me pull up my notes for you here. Uh, okay, so I already read you my favorite quote from the book, but to summarize this book, McDougall says the starch solution can help you lose weight and feel better and look better and with no extra effort help heal the world around you, reducing global warming and making our planet healthier and more sustainable. He goes into a lot more detail about exactly how that is, but I'm only going to give you the little summaries here. It is intuitive information based on scientific proof an easy to follow plan and nearly a hundred simple and satisfying recipes to pave the way. Now, full disclosure, I have not tried any of his recipes yet because I'm still eating based on my meal plan from the Forks Over Knives book, which I covered last time, but they're very, very similar. McDougall was involved with the Forks Over Knives documentary in one of the books, 
And so a lot of crossover there with the information. Um, I have to say his recipes didn't look quite as exciting as the recipes from Forks Over Knives, but without try trying them, I can't really judge them. So I'm looking forward to trying them sometime soon. So what do McDougall recommends here is centering the food on your plate around starches, adding color and flavor with non-starchy vegetables and fruits. Starches can be classified as whole grains, legumes, or starchy vegetables. Now, peanuts, he points out, are a legume, but they're very high in fat and should be minimalized, minimized or avoided altogether, especially if you are trying to lose weight. He also says the same thing about some other nuts like almonds here. So just because something is a starch doesn't mean that it's healthy for you, and he points out a lot of the details and how to navigate that here. In fact, I'll get to some of those details in a moment. Grains, legumes, and starchy vegetables are some of the least expensive foods you can buy. A starch-based diet with added fruits, vegetables, and condiments will cost you about, wait for it, $3 per person per day. I mean, people say so frequently that a healthy diet is so expensive. The vegan lifestyle is so expensive. Organic eating is so expensive. I've talked about this a lot. In fact, I wrote a whole ebook on this called Healthy Organic Vegan on a Budget. And in my findings, I was able to eat for under $5 a day, but for him to say that you could eat for $3 a day is so impressive. And this is including all of your meals. He lays it out, he shows you all the calculations, and this is also based on getting 2,500 calories a day. He even compares it to how much it would cost to get 2,500 calories from fast food. It's actually much more expensive to eat fast food in terms of caloric density and the health size of it. This I love so much, and this should be a no-brainer. I mean, buying this book, which retails for, it doesn't say on here, but probably not very much. I'm, I'm probably thinking around $15, depending on if you buy it new or used. Again, I'll link to it down below. But what an investment, right, to follow this plan. In fact, he says that the net savings from switching your 2,500 calories per day from fast foods to starch-based meals is $11 per person a day you could save. Over the course of a year, that puts savings in your pockets of more than $4,000 a year per person. So this is not including if you have a family here. He says a four-person family would save about $16,000 by switching it over. Now, of course, there's all these little intricate details in there, which is exactly why I wrote the ebook. You can find my ebook at veganebook.com, uh, and I will link to that down below. And it, it's not based on this book specifically, so I might actually need to update a little bit. But my point being is that that kind of removes this excuse. We spend so much money trying to get healthy. We spend so much money on all of these diets and pills and supplements, and of course, exercise. I think is very important, but. The point here is that you don't need to spend a lot of money to get healthy or to lose weight or to get to your optimal weight, whatever that might be. And so breathe a sigh of relief there. And I'm telling you, I've done this myself. I, I went out and when I was doing the Forks Over Knives book last week, I put together a whole meal plan, which is actually in that free PDF. And in that meal plan, I, I used it to make a shopping list. And I went and shopped and I bought a ton of things. And I'm still working my way through all the ingredients that I bought a week and a half later. And I think in total I spent about $100, but that also includes some things that are going to be on my shelf longer terms, like, you know, certain condiments and stuff like that. And all of that was organic. So you can save a lot of money. I'm not going to do all the math for you right now, but you get my point, I hope. All right, so a couple more points from this book, or a few more, I should say. You won't feel hungry or deprived because starches are not only healthy, they're also comforting and filling. This is a plan you can follow indefinitely. So that's another way for you to breathe a sigh of relief is knowing that this isn't like a short-term thing that you're going to do. You know, a lot of us, we want to lose weight quickly and we're just looking for like a temporary solution or we want to put on weight or muscle or whatever it may be. And then we think we're just going to go back to our old ways because we're not going to be satisfied. But I can tell you through following uh, the Forks Over Knives plan, I have been so satisfied. I've been eating a ton of starches and these meals fill me up and I just feel great. I have more energy. I've actually been tr slimming down a little bit and I just feel more vibrant all around. So you're not going to be dissatisfied, unsatisfied here. And this is something that you can do long term. 
So this book isn't necessarily centered around weight loss, but he does include a lot of great weight loss tips in it. I mean, he kind of markets it as weight loss, but it's much more on the health side of things. However, one thing that I found super helpful in here was he had a quick list of how to achieve maximum weight loss. So he said, number one, increase the amount of non-starchy green, yellow, and orange vegetables you eat to about one third to one half of the food on your plate. Then fill the remainder of your plate with starches. So that's the grains, the legumes, and the starchy vegetables. Then you want to avoid simple sugars, including dried fruit and juices. So this is something I kind of covered in the last video, the forks over knives. So uh, juices specifically, you're drinking your calories. So you can have water or tea or something low calorie, low sugar instead of juice. Um, but you want to just avoid it, keep it down to a minimum. Uh, keep fresh fruits to one or two a day. Now that's interesting. I'm really looking forward to exploring some different perspectives on fruit through this series. As I mentioned, I'm going to be covering the 80-10 diet soon, and that has a completely different perspective on fruits, even though a lot of that book is in alignment with this one. Uh, in this piece, he doesn't go too much in detail about that, but he really thinks that starches should be the main thing that you eat. Uh, avoid flowers or flower products. So that's interesting too, but that also goes hand in hand with a lot of the dietary choices are people making like gluten-free, although you can easily find gluten-free flour. I think he's saying it's too processed and you end up eating a lot of baked goods that aren't really benefiting you or filling you up here. Steer clear of all high fat plant foods such as nuts, seeds, avocados, olives, and soy-based foods. So these should be had at a minimum. Again, this is something that a lot of people differ in opinion. This is McDougal's opinion, period, and I will be comparing other different opinions on here. It's exactly why I'm doing this series because there's a lot of conflicting information about this, but they are high in fat, so if you're trying to lose weight, it doesn't really make sense to eat a lot of high fat foods. Instead, the starchy foods will make you feel just as satisfied. You don't really need those fats that frequently in your diet. Eat many small meals a day rather than one or two large ones. I personally love this because I like to snack a lot. So I like to have things like soups or small salads or small grain bowls like rice. Um, I like to have potato dishes. Like the other day I filled up on like a big pan of baked potatoes that didn't use any oil and I felt so satisfied and so I added that in with a bunch of other meals throughout the day and it, it made me feel great rather than trying to sit down and have these big meals and then wait till the next one. This also is great for someone that is super busy so for me I, I work for myself and I'm you know for me I just want to have small meals sprinkled out whenever I feel hungry. So that's a good thing for me. Eat a simple meal plan. So he includes that in here. So keeping it as simple as possible. Don't eat out at restaurants. Remember, this is if you're trying to achieve maximum weight loss. And he does give you some tips for how to eat out at restaurants. And also I covered this in the Forks Over Knives book last week. Um, if you do eat out at restaurants, you really want to pay attention to making sure that you're they're not including oil in your foods. And again, this is for the weight loss. If you are trying to put on weight, he does say that you can include the higher fat foods, but he always says to exclude oil from your diet. And lastly, exercise more frequently to burn more calories and to tame an overactive appetite. So whatever your favorite exercise routine is, I'll be covering that in some other videos. Sadly, a lot of these books I've been reading so far haven't gone much into depth into exercise, but I will definitely make a point to include some tips on that. Lastly, his very last point after that list was enjoyment and satisfaction are the keys to successful diet change and weight loss. So you want to make sure you're happy, that you're having fun, that you're feeling satisfied. And that's going to be a little bit different for each of you, depending on what your food preferences are, what your lifestyle is, all of that. So this is all just guidance here. None of this is strict rules. In fact, he says in the book, this is not about perfection. It's about doing the best that you can and using his advice as some guidelines. Okay, so... I will finish this up with the sev the rules of the seven day sure start plan, which he includes in here. Number one, eat more starch. Number two, choose the least processed starches and other foods you can find. Three, eat plenty of vegetables. Four, eliminate animal foods from your diet. 
five, keep your fat intake as low as possible. Six, avoid any added fat in your food. Seven, when eating soy foods, skip those that are highly processed. And eight, go easy on sugar and salt. And again, he goes quite in depth in this book about each of those different subjects and how to do it properly. And for that reason, I really recommend picking up, picking up a copy of this book and reading it because I learned so much. I have highlights all over the place in here. And again, I have some more details in the notes, including things on vitamin D, which last week I, I discovered that vitamin D can actually, or deficiency in vitamin D can actually be connected to weight gain or having trouble losing weight. So he talks about the importance of getting sunshine instead of taking a supplement. He also talks about B12 and goes into some great details about how to get the right B12 and where to get it from, how much you need. Um, and yeah, there's so much in here, but I'm trying to keep these videos shorter. So that is a quick summary of this book and some of his best tips. Really, it's adding in as many starches as you want to your diet and just getting more aware of what you're consuming and why. A lot of us just kind of eat food because we like the way it tastes or it's convenient to us or we think it's less expensive but really when you start to switch your mentality when you make these simple changes when you follow a meal plan like this it can be easier it can be more fulfilling it can be less expensive and it can be much more satisfying and this is something that you can do in the long run i really enjoyed this reading this book mainly because i wanted to learn more about the importance of eating starches and eating oil free and I feel very convinced about that I mean I'm trying not to make any like long-term decisions I'm really just trying to take it day by day and and eat what makes me feel good but right now I feel great following this and the forks over knives advice in fact if you follow my other channel what a vegan eats you'll see actually day by day documentation on what I eat every single day and those videos are super casual and uh, you'll see every th single thing. My nose is super itchy right now. Sorry. Um, so, I mean, I, I really, really enjoyed it. it. It did take me a little bit time of time to go through this book. I felt like it was super dense. It's about 200 pages of information. So it took me about five or six days reading every single day to get through it. But I was just absorbing the information. I think that was part of it is it takes a little bit longer to read books that are super dense with info. There's only so much you want to consume at least in my opinion but having your highlighter ready having something to mark it up to take notes can really help you understand the information and because this is all scientifically backed there is so much great detail in here um, that's coming from not just an opinion of his own and his own experience as a doctor but all these different studies that he's taken into account which I think makes this a very valid book so I give this book two thumbs up I love the info I'm following it myself and it's making a big difference in a short amount of time. I would love to hear your own experiences or opinions with McDougal. He is, again, has such a big presence in the, the vegan lifestyle and so many people have used his tips to lose weight or to get to their optimal body weight. I also wanted to point out that I am a huge fan of his products, especially these instant soups. I have been eating these for like a couple months now and I'll keep them in my home for like emergencies so if I'm super short on time or I'm low on energy I don't want to make food or I'm suddenly realized I forgot to eat all day and I need to eat something my blood sugar is dropping these are so so helpful they've also been really great while I've been traveling and so I love any of the gluten-free ones because I'm gluten-free uh, the pad thai noodle soup is one of my favorites he is a just a regular pad thai he is like a hot and sour soup there's probably like maybe between five to ten different flavors of the soups alone. Then he has soups in a box. I didn't like those quite as much. And I think that he has a few other products that I haven't tried yet, but the soups are my go-to. I'll link to them down below, but you can find them in almost any market. I found them in Wegmans, Whole Foods, of course, uh, smaller natural markets, just regular grocery stores in Los Angeles, on the East Coast. They're great. Oh, I've tried his oatmeals too. I liked those. So I will keep you posted as I try some of the recipes from the book. I have a list of those that I'm going to try and those are also in the PDF. So again, if you want to get the PDF of my more extensive notes that is linked to down below, all you have to do is sign up for the newsletter and I will send you the notes from each book that I read every week. 
And if you want to read the books and have a discussion around them, you can become part of the Eco Vegan Gal book club. And that is for the people that are part of the Patreon community. Patreon is a place where uh, people can gather together and, and really help support Eco Vegan Gal. You can ship in as little as a dollar a month, and that goes directly towards helping me produce content like this. I do over 40 videos a month across all my channels. So I have this channel, What a Vegan Eats, the Uncensored channel, the Venture channel, and also the Dog channel, which hasn't been updated in a while, but all of those are linked down below if you're looking for more content. I also do Periscopes and Snapchats and all sorts of things across Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, so you can find something from me every single day. And by being part of the Patreon community, you actually are chipping in to help support me. And you get all sorts of perks, like being part of the book club. And with the book club, we're gonna be reading and discussing a book every month. So I have a strong feeling it's gonna be this book, because so far this one has been the most informative, but you guys actually get to vote. So the link to that one is right down below and also up at the letter I up above. And I will see you next Wednesday for another book. I haven't decided, I have to look at the list. Uh, you guys send in a bunch of votes for which books that you wanted to read, so I'll be checking out the the most popular options there and uh, coming up with a book pretty soon. Actually, I have to do that by tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'd love to hear your comments, your own experience with McDougal, how you are on your journey to getting the body that you want, whether you're trying to lose weight, gain weight, uh, just be healthy. I would love an update from you. Any other great tips, articles, books that you're reading. Keep me posted, but it also keeps other people posted. Be part of the community in the comments down below. If this, if this is your first video of mine that you're watching, give it a thumbs up if you like it and subscribe to this channel so you're the first to know when there are more videos like this. And I will see you next time. Bye.